What you doing? Right now, we are taking the line off of a lot of these reels. We're over here on Santee Cooper, and we are fishing for very large bass. And we're downsizing our line on a couple of these rods. Got a phone call. Spinning reels ready. Flipping rods ready. Jerk bait. Flipping rod. That's a frog rod right there. So let's see. Let's look at this one. Tell us about it. Santee Cooper. Starts in the morning. It's been tough. I'm hoping they come to where I need them to come to. Because it ain't been real easy to catch them. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, I'm kind of nervous about this one. I'm not going to play it smart, which maybe I should, but I'm not. We'll see how it goes. If I can generate enough bites, I think I can catch a good bag, but I mean, we're on Santee Cooper. If you catch 10 fish, you're going to have a good bag. It's just hard to do that. So, I guess I'm going to gamble. I guess I'm going to gamble a little bit and try to Try to make some waves, I guess. I don't know. Hopefully we can at least, if it, if it doesn't go well, I'm really hoping we can at least salvage it and end up having a decent tournament, even if it goes poorly. So I'm not planning on it going poorly, though. I'm hoping we can catch them early, get off to a really good start, and it'll be good. I don't know what you guys see. Do you feel a lot of pressure going into this tournament? Because of your last two? No. I can't, I don't know if it's possible for me to feel more pressure going into these tournaments because I put so much pressure on myself naturally. I want to do so well in these tournaments that I just try to be as prepared as possible. I just um, always try to control everything I can possibly control, make good decisions, you know, and see what happens. All right, guys, what's going on? Rigging right now for Santee. We have an off day on this one, which is pretty cool. We don't have an off day too often, but we do have an off day on this one. And we are rigging, trying to get everything ready. You know, obviously, it's no secret. Had two very bad tournaments to start my season. Had my two, had my worst finish ever at St. John's, which was really bad. So then I had my second worst finish ever at Harris Chain, back to back. It's my third year on the Elites. Had my two worst finishes ever, back to back. So, you know, the thought process going into the third tournament. It's not going to change at all. So that's what we're kind of, I kind of wanted to talk about a little bit was how to deal and how to get over with those tough things happening. I ain't got over it yet. We're still doing very bad in points. We're still going to have to try, see what we can do to get over it. But, I mean, it's the same exact thought process. You control everything you can possibly control. You don't over adjust, you know. Like, I've had some good tournaments on the elites. I've had a really lucky, really fortunate career on the elites. So you don't want to overcorrect that's a very important thing is you don't want to overcorrect just because you had a couple of bad results and you want to keep the same thought process you know i've had a lot of good tournaments in florida had two bad ones you don't want to think that hey every time i've ever fished florida i did it wrong because that's just not true you're going to have bad results from time to time no matter how much you control or how good of decisions you make or whatever you're going to have bad results occasionally and that's kind of what you know you have to realize going into something like competitive fishing is sometimes bad stuff just gonna happen point blank period it's just going to and you just want to keep doing the same thing you're doing that got you here control everything you can make good decisions try the best you can to execute and not lose any and be extremely prepared for these tournaments and then just you know hope you have a, a positive result that's just the fact of the matter you know, that's all you can do. You know, like, I can't control where exactly a fish swims or if a fish bites or if he don't or if he looks at it and he almost bites and he don't bite. I can't control none of that stuff. All I can do is put my bait in front of as many bass as I possibly can, give them opportunity to bite it, and when they bite it, I have opportunity to catch them. So, same thought process. And that's, that goes with everything in life, you know. And it, sometimes bad stuff just happens. You keep working hard. You keep going and you try to dig yourself out of whatever hole you got into. And if you, if you don't dig yourself all the way out of the hole, oh well. You just continue to progress, continue to get better. And that's my only goal. I want to stay on the elites for as long as I possibly can. And I want to continue to improve for the rest of my life. I want to be a better fisherman in five years than I am right now. I don't want to be the same. I want to be a better fisherman after this tournament than I am right now. So that's kind of the thought process that I have. And that's just kind of the way that I'm dealing with a downswing in bass fishing. You know, I've dealt with a lot of downswings in fishing before. I've dealt with a lot of downswings in poker. Dealt with downswings in life. Sometimes stuff just happens like that. And, you know, just a positive outlook. 
making good decisions will get you out of almost everything you ever get into. So, you know, that's that's kind of what we're trying to do this week. Make good decisions and catch us some daggum bass. And they need to be about that dang long. So, I'm hoping, I'm hoping we can do it. What do you think you did? Do you think you did anything wrong? Or do you think you made bad decisions? Or do you think you got a muck? St. John's, I don't know what happened. I fished. I went back and looked at the footage. I thought back on it. I fished pretty good, I feel like. I honestly feel like I fished pretty good at St. John's. I just didn't get any bites. Like, I don't know what else to say. I just didn't get any bites. I fished through some really good areas. I don't know. I don't know what happened. And then uh, Harris Chain, I made some mistakes with Harris Chain. Made some time management mistakes. Wasted some time in some bad areas. Wasted some time on some bed fish that I knew probably were not going to bite. And that bit me in the butt. But, you know, Harris Chain was one of those one, ones, too, where I was a late boat number in a bed fishing tournament. All the ones I went to, somebody was already on them at first. Then I went to another area and kind of beat around and caught me a, a few three-pounders, you know, out of this other area where I was bed fishing and ended up with 13 pounds, which is not good by any stretch. But, you know, I just, I never stumbled across a big one. I bed fished almost the entire day. Caught some fish, caught a limit early, caught a lot. I just never found one of those big ones that would bite. So, on day two, I decided to just fish a little bit more, and I didn't bed fish much. What little bit I did bed fish, I, I mean, it just didn't come together. And then whenever I was just fishing, I didn't catch them. Like, you know, I didn't get any bites hardly. I caught some, you know, I, you're going to lose some here and there. I lost some on every tournament. But, you know, that's just, that's just how it goes. On Harris Chain, I wasted a little bit of time. I made a couple of bad decisions. That being said, I had 16 hours of fishing time. I probably wasted two and a half, three hours. You know, so I still had 13 or 14 really good hours of fishing time during that tournament, and I still didn't catch them. So maybe I decided to stay in some areas that are just not quite as good as I thought they were. I'm not really sure. But regardless, we didn't catch them, and we're in the Santee. We're going to stop thinking about what we did wrong in the last two and think about what we can do right in this one. And tomorrow, we might be fishing stupidly because I am think I'm going to gamble and try to catch us. Some daggum what diggers. Is, what does gamble mean? I've got an area where I feel like it's a safer play. It's definitely not a guarantee. It's, it's not a guarantee at all that I can go there and catch enough to get a check for two days in a row. And it's an area that I don't really think is going to hold up for multiple days. So I'm going to run to an area where I did not get very many bites at all. I've seen some big ones. I've seen some bed fish. And I caught one big one. And we're going to run to that area. And we're just going to see what happens. I'm hoping that we catch them. If we don't, we just don't. But I'm really hoping that we can generate some bites down there and catch the limit. Are you going to bail at like 11? That's the plan right now. I'm going to go to my starting area, see what happens. And if I, if I fish around in there for an hour, hour and a half, and I have not got a bite, we're going to have to bail and go, go run to some bedfish, fish for some bedfish for... I mean, if they start biting, if I can pick them off and catch them and get some stuff going, I'll do that the whole rest of the day. If I go to three or four bedfish and I can't get them to bite, it's 11 o'clock and I've got one, or it's 11 o'clock and I've got none or something, we're bailing. We're going to make like an hour-long run somewhere else and uh, try to grind it out. How do you decide when you're going to bail on a bedfish? Like, how long do you sit there on it? It just depends on his attitude. If I throw up there and he gets way off the bed, like I, first cast, he leaves the bed big time and doesn't come back, you know, for like 10 minutes, we're done. We're leaving that one already. If I throw up there and he doesn't get spooked and he's super aggressive at the, at the bait, I'll probably sit on that one. Even if it takes me 25, 30, 45 minutes, I'll probably sit on that one for a long time because I know he's going to bite at some point in time. And then you just kind of got to figure it out from there. I'll spend 10 or 15 minutes on a bedfish just kind of because I know it seems like that's the magic window. After you've been on one for 10 or 15 minutes, they seem to settle down, get kind of used to the boat, all that type of stuff. And then they kind of get a little bit more acclimated to what you're doing and you can seem to catch them. So I'll spend 10 or 15 minutes on one that seems kind of interested and then I'll bail and I'll spend a long time on one that I'm pretty sure I can get to bite. Because I mean, sometimes you have fish where you know they'll bite, they bite, they bite the second cast and you miss him or, or whatever. Then you mess with him again, he bites again like 10 minutes later. You miss him again, you mess with him for like 10 more minutes. You miss him again, or you hook him and lose him, and then it takes you 20 more minutes to get him to bite again, and then you catch him. So you spend an hour on that fish, but you got him to bite your second cast. So you could have caught him in one minute, but instead it took you an hour, because things just didn't come together like it could have, because, I mean, I could have hooked him the first time I set the hook and caught him. That's just kind of the way that stuff goes sometimes when you're bed fishing. So these are big males, 
you know they're three to three and three quarter pound males so those are usually the ones where if they bite if if they bite they get it pretty good so we're hoping they bite we're hoping we don't even need to go to them we'll save them for day two if we got to but we'll just see how it goes fishing around any more questions um do you have a magic date that you start a bait Redfish? Got one. When's this going out? After term before it. Well, I was gonna do it before, but we can do it after now since we've already given. Before is fine because no, no, nobody can, no, nobody can uh, get these. I don't think. So thirteen fishing has a invader, and they got it in white, and they eat it really good on bed, like surprisingly good on bed. One of the, I mean, they eat, they eat all baits on bed, like they eat it really, really good on bed. You know, like. Any bait that you throw has always, I've always thought it's about the same. doesn't really matter what you throw. So I've always wanted to throw something with a thinner body where I know if they eat it, I catch them. Since I've been flipping that bait on bed. My question is, I've heard them. a lot of people talk about how, like, whenever they first get to a bed fish, they, like, top water them a little bit or, like, mid water them. Do you always just, like... Yeah, always. You're always going to do something that goes to the bottom? Yep. You're never going to like try to aggravate them from the top or anything? I will if you won't bite. But for me, I want to throw whatever bait in the bed that I'm going to land him the most percentage of the time on. That's what I think about whenever I'm bed fishing is which bait, if he bites, will I land him on? And usually, I want to have a 4 alt gamakatsu straight shank hook and some kind of small little piece of plastic. And when I set the hook on him, he's coming in the boat probably like 97% of the time. You did catch an eight pounder on a spinning pole in Florida. I did. Caught an eight pounder on a spinning pole in Florida. That's all it would bite. That's the only thing I could get it to bite. And you know, I'm not. Spinning pole will catch them. It'll catch big ones. But that fish, I couldn't get him to bite. Couldn't get him to pull up in the bed. Nothing. And I just was throwing that wacky rig to his face. Like I was letting it drop in front of his face. And finally, it ate it. So I'm not above it. I catch one. I catch one on an old spinning pole on an egg beater. Day one starts tomorrow. Day one, in the morning. Gotta rig some stuff.